All right, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. Our next session is titled Successful AI Use Cases in Pharma. This session will be brought to you by two amazing speakers from Analytical Wizards. Please join me in welcoming them to our virtual stage. Thank you, Patrika. Pleasure to be here. Let me just share my slides so we can go ahead and get started. All right. So we look forward to today's conversation on the successful AI use cases in pharma. First, I'll introduce myself and my co-presenter, Jason Carlin, and then we'll go through four specific applications of artificial intelligence that we were able to operationalize in the pharmaceutical space. I'm Ina Glossman, a head of ICE product at Analytical Wizards. EYES is a solution that includes applications of artificial intelligence to pharma, and that, of course, is the topic that we'll be discussing today. I've been working in pharma insights and analytics over the last 20 years, and prior to joining Analytical Wizards, I had worked at Merck, Roche, Novartis, and ASI. My colleague Jason Carlin, who is my co-presenter today, is a principal at Analytical Wizards, just like myself, Jason is an artificial intelligence and data science practitioner who's been working in pharma over the last 15 years and has previously worked at ASI, Bayer, and Novartis. Also, to give you a brief introduction of the company that we are a part of, Analytical Wizards is on an ambitious mission to revolutionize healthcare analytics. We work at the intersection of data science, artificial intelligence technology, and healthcare with the goal to infuse scalability, efficiency, and speed to insights to all of our solutions. We were founded six short years ago, but despite that early company age, Analytical Wizards has already been recognized as the top 5,000 fastest growing private companies and also recognized by CIO Applications Magazine as the top 25 predictive analytics solutions worldwide. We work both in the US and across the globe. In the magenta elements on the map, you can see all the countries where we've conducted our engagements. When we look at the artificial intelligence applications in pharma, we found three broad areas where artificial intelligence is especially useful. The first area is patient finder, where we focus on patient acquisition and identifying the patients most appropriate for treatment. And we've been able to do that both for rare diseases and for certain elements of the common illnesses. So we'll discuss these two use cases in a moment. The other part where we find AIML especially helpful is in engagement predictor, which is an opportunity to both improve effectiveness and efficiency of promotional investments. And last but not least, we have focused on the trial accelerator, which allows us to use predictive modeling to help clinical development by identifying fastest recruiting investigators and fastest recruiting clinical sites, which in turn speeds up the clinical trial patient recruitment. So let me showcase how we think about patient finder. Again, how artificial intelligence has been helpful for identifying appropriate patients. This first uh, use case is in rare disease. To give you some background, when I mentioned rare disease, this particular condition we were focused on is not only rare, but also very recently identified as a distinct syndrome. Previously, of course, patients have been suffering with different symptoms for years, but only a couple of years ago was there recognition in the medical community that this particular collection of symptoms constitutes its own unique illness that, of course, requires specific treatment. This particular illness has no ICD-10 code. So our goal in this assessment was to identify and, and size the eligible patient pool for this particular condition to inform launch planning because the product we were working on was pre-launch. So what we started with is, again, given the unique elements of this particular market, is analyzing unstructured EMR clinical notes using natural language processing. And we really had to go beyond keywords here because 
with this particular illness, it was not only about the ruling in of some of the symptoms, but also about ruling out some of the symptoms. So NLP really sped up our um, process here. And in addition to using artificial intelligence, we also deployed the medical expertise because we believe that some of the best solutions are really at the intersection of different approaches. After our initial findings using NLP and medical expertise, we merged these learnings with the data available through claims. And that allowed us to accurately predict the annual universe of eligible patients. And given again, some of the unique elements associated with this illness, we were able to segment these patients into highly likely to have this condition, likely to have that condition and unlikely to have this condition. So we looked at both inclusion and exclusion as our key elements. The business impact from this assessment was that we were able to accurately identify 4.4K of patients who are highly likely to have this rare condition. And just to give you a perspective, at the initial part of the assessment before we got started, the company estimates in this particular rare condition were tenfold difference, meaning there were some estimates suggesting that there are only 500 patients in, um, who have this illness, or that it could be as high as 5,500 patients having this illness. And of course, the accuracy of the patient pool is really important for creating of the accurate product forecast, which allows appropriate amount of product to be produced to help these patients. And our assessment also allowed to identify key physicians with whom the company at launch could discuss both product education and disease education. And given the rarity of this condition, this really spun beyond typical identification of specialties because there were multiple specialists and again, some segments of these specialists who were treating this particular rare disease. To close out this part of the discussion, again, we remind you that the key part was the starting point of using natural language process to mine unstructured clinical data for some of our initial key findings and patient identifiers. Now, the second case study in patient finder looks at the very common condition, diabetes, uh, type two diabetes. Now here, the business goal for our client was to identify patients who are moving from first-line diabetes treatment to second-line diabetes treatment. And at any point in time, the movement from first line to second line actually occurs in a very small portion of this very, very large patient universe. So here we started from probabilistic identification of patients who move from first line to second line. And we looked at multiple AI ML options, tested random forest, XGBoost, and GBM. And generally, we believe very strongly that when it comes to um, artificial intelligence, machine learning analytics, it's very important to test multiple approaches and identify the best one for a particular use case. So here GBM produced the best results and therefore that was our final model. And then we also built another model which zeroed in on the reasons why patients were moving from first line to second line because again, these reasons varied uh, across patients and identification of those reasons was essential for the actual operationalization for our client of the discussion with physician, the drivers and the barriers of the movement. So here we tested decision tree and logistic regression. We're also believers that sometimes the simple approach is actually uh, very effective for a solution. So logistic regression worked best and that was our final application here. In addition to using um, AIML, our features for AIML were informed by some of the initial primary research findings, as well, of course, as the data mining in the initial stages of this uh, engagement. The other element we added as a part of stitching different data sources together is that, again, given the nature of the disease, we found it useful to look at both medical claims data and lab data for this assessment. The business impact was that not only did we identify a group of patients 
and their corresponding physicians that move from first line to second line at a point in time, we were able to operationalize it where a client receives a quarterly assessment predicting who will be the patients emerging to the second line space next quarter and who are their treating physicians. That of course allows for proactive just-in-time messaging that uh, allows for conversion to the client's brand at that second line juncture. We give you some examples of the model output, and of course, these are blinded to protect client confidentiality. Here are some of the features that predict movement to second line. And here are some of the reasons, both drivers and barriers, that were necessary to identify for discussions with the physicians pertaining to their specific patients. So this approach summarizes how uh, artificial intelligence can help with patient identification in the pharma space. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Jason Carlin, to discuss the engagement predictor case study. Thank you, Ina. Um, is my camera up? You can go to the next slide. Yes. So the next case study is engagement predictor or sometimes called next best action. But really what we're doing is we're ensuring that the right customer gets the right message at the right time through the right channel and the right cadence. So the right patient can get the right treatment at the right time. Um, and here we were really optimizing the future prescribing of brand X, which was a oral drug and a hematologic malignancy, um, which was now a crowded market. So this big pharma client implemented triggers to proactively direct the non-personal promotional efforts uh, to their targets, hematologists and oncologists, um, resulting in a lift um, translating in incremental sales of 472,000 in the next four weeks. So this was a billion dollar drug where you know any little movement had big impact. So to give a little bit of background about this uh, market, um, in any given month, about a third of the um, doctors wrote a script for this brand. Um, and not all the digital vendors are effectively utilized every month. So the deployment goal was really identify and target the right doctors with a highly likelihood to prescribe this brand in the future and determine the next best action in terms of the non-personal promotional channel activity um, to make sure that the right message uh, gets to the right customer at the right time through the right channel. Um, so the business objective, there was actually two um, objectives here. One was to expand the breadth. So if a prescriber or if a doctor has not prescribed this drug in the past, then it's more get, getting them to adopt the drug. Um, but for those doctors that did prescribe the drug in the past, it was more to um, grow their prescriptions. So we would identify drivers of adoption as well as identify drivers of growth and determine an adoption likelihood score for the non-prescribing uh, physicians and a growth likelihood score for the prescribing physicians and ultimately recommend an optimal non-personal promotional mix for the physician segment with a high propensity to prescribe. So the way that analytical wizards approached this problem is we looked at each doctor in a rolling 52 week period, um, looking at their behavior as well as the promotions that try to predict what was the best promotion that really optimized those next four weeks? Um, the data that we gathered for this project is we gathered the personal promotional channels um, and we weren't optimizing the personal promotional channels, but we were controlling for them. And what that looks like in our industry is um, sales reps, calls to doctors, any speaker programs, any lunch and learns, anything that's um, you know kind of a personal promotion. So we control for those and then the non-personal channels, which is mainly banner ads, um, webinars, emails, kind of anything online is what we're really trying to tweak and optimize here. And there was about 7,500 doctors included in this analysis. Um, and then the business impact, like I said earlier, the next best action recommendation resulted in a lift for the brand um, and sales of close to half a million dollars in a, the first four weeks of implementation. And here's kind of a visualization of you know, what it looks like. So the doctors over on the left, um, those five kind of boxes next to the doctor are the different non-personal promotional channels. Um, and you can see the first column in green is the recommended activity in the last 12 months. 
Um, when you get to the blue and the purple, those are the actual activities that happened in the last 11 months or even in the last four weeks. So you can see it was kind of different than what the model would predict is optimal. So we recommended a new kind of deployment for the next four weeks, which increased uh, the probability to prescribe score by 3.5%, which was the impact that I discussed earlier. So that was really kind of partnering on the commercial side and the outreach to doctors in the non-personal um, promotional area. Now we're gonna completely switch gears and show you a case study with uh, clinical operations and trial accelerator. So here we're partnering with clinical operations um, to help expedite their uh, phase two or phase three clinical trials. And here's a case study where a pharma company spent 24 months recruiting for a phase three clinical trial. And at the end of those 24 months, they were only 20% of their patient enrollment goal. So if they you know, would have kept up at this pace, it could have taken another eight years to finish. So the analytical wizards approach is we leveraged big data. And what we leverage here is, um, and what Ina mentioned earlier, the claims data. This is anonymous patient level data, which is doctor identifiable. So you don't know the patient's Jason Carlin. It'll say patient number one, two, three, four. But you do know that patient one, two, three, four's doctor is Dr. Ina Glosman. And that's one of the big inputs to this, as well as we also pull in clinical trial data whether it's in-house at the client side or we pull from publicly available data sources to see if they've done similar trials in the past and how successful were they at that. And what we do is we um, end up predicting which investigators and which sites would be fastest at enrolling patients um, for a clinical trial. There's also kind of a, a secondary target list that comes out of this of physicians who could refer patients to the investigators. And then the business result in this case, when we looked at the top 20 sites, 18 of the top 20 sites weren't currently targeted. So they retargeted and the patient enrollment accelerated tenfold. So they went from an average of enrolling three patients per month in that first 24 months up to 30 patients per month. They completed enrollment of the remaining 80% of patients in the next 12 months. They estimated the trial cost savings at around $10 million because these phase three trials are very expensive. But more importantly, getting to market sooner meant more time on market before loss of exclusivity which they estimated at 150 million. And ultimately getting to market sooner, you're able to expand your patient pool um, and more patients can get the thera these life-changing therapies that they need. So just to kind of summarize the different use cases, um, successful AI ML use cases in pharmas, we have the patient finder, which is finding hard to find patients, could be rare disease or even in a common illness. Engagement predictor, you know, making sure that the doctor gets the right message at the right time through the right channel and the right cadence so the right patient can get the right therapy. And then trial accelerator, predicting which sites and investigators are fastest in enrolling uh, patients to a clinical trial, getting to market sooner, which has huge impact and ultimately patients um, have more access to your therapy. And then one of the things that we think are the keys to success is really kind of twofold here. One is focus on the business need and the end-to-end -end implementation. And what we mean by that is really uh, focus on the implementation from the onset of the project. Make sure that you truly understand the business need, how the solution will really fit into their processes. Keep things simple um, so that your key stakeholders kind of understand, they can follow along in the journey, um, they believe it, and then ultimately we'll take action on the results. So with that, um, if you have any questions about these or any comments or want to share any learnings or want to discuss in more details, you can email us at info at analyticalwizards.com or you can email Ina or myself directly. Our emails are the first letter of our first name and then the last name at analyticalwizards.com. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Patricia. Wow, thank you, Ina and Jason. That was amazing. And I know this virtual audience is going wild with virtual applause. <laughs> thank you both so much for sharing these insights with us today. For the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. Along the way, make sure you accept your connection request and take some time to check out our amazing exhibits. Thanks so much, and we'll see you around. <laughs>